Learn how to do Animal Kingdom solo on this week's episode of the Theme Park Hipster Show. Hey, Theme Park Hipsters! It's your host, Nikki J, the owner of ThemeParkHipster.com, where I help you plan the best solo theme park vacation with the latest tips, reviews, personal stories, and more. Today we have a spectacular episode just for all of you solo travelers or wannabe solo travelers. Today we are heading over to the magical, epic Disney theme park called Animal Kingdom. But first, if you are thinking about making that trek over to Animal Kingdom, then I'm going to leave a link in today's show notes where you can get your perfect Animal Kingdom itinerary. Now, when you think of theme park travel, you may be thinking, I don't see how going to Disney by yourself is something I want to do. But I want you to kind of think about that because one of my favorite theme parks to go solo is Disney's Animal Kingdom. This is a solo traveler's must and Animal Kingdom has always been a great half day park. But now with the addition of Pandora and some of the future things coming to Animal Kingdom, it is a great whole day park for you to attend. Animal Kingdom, like I said, is located on the Walt Disney World property and it has over 1,700 animals. That is pretty amazing. And it is accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. What I like about Disney's Animal Kingdom is that it is one of those perfect parks to go get lost in, take your time, put on a great Pandora radio station or one of your favorite Disney theme park podcasts, made me like this one, and just get lost in all the magic. That's how I do it, but you know, you can put your own little touch and spin on your Animal Kingdom trip. One of the things that I have noticed that I mention all the time is that since I started traveling solo, I do notice that I am a little bit more confident when I'm introducing myself to people because, you know, when you are traveling by yourself, you got to get out of your shell. You can't depend on people to kind of give you that energy of asking questions Everything that you do, all the decisions that you make are yours on your solo trip. But what I will say is that the Disney parks are just right for any solo traveler, meaning that when you are there, you never feel alone. I don't want you to ever feel like you're going to be alone or scared or terrified when you're there. Some of the questions I do get asked is, do you think people will notice me on my solo trip? And I'm here to tell you that most people don't even notice you're by yourself, honestly. The only time they really know that you're by yourself is if you are literally telling them you're by yourself or if you're standing in a line alone. Sometimes they may think that you are just the only one in your party who wanted to get on a ride. But some people will go a little bit deeper. This one guy asked me that question when I was in the Fast Pass line for Flight of Passage. And he was like, oh, my God, are you by yourself? I was like, yeah. He's like, wow. The look on his face because he did have a lot of kids with him. And he was kind of like, I think I should have took your route. <laughs> but he looked at me. He was like, wow, that is amazing. I was like, I do it all the time. It's kind of like my therapy. And the good thing about it is that later on, one of the cast members came to us and they were like, any party of one? And before I could even say anything, my advocate, this guy I just met, pointed to me. He's like, she's here. She's party of one. And, and I was like, thank you. And as I walked away, he gave me like this big old thumbs up like, yeah, I got you back, solo traveler. So those are just some of the stories that you can get while you are traveling to Animal Kingdom by yourself. Now we are going to get into nine tips that you can do to make solo travel to any of the Walt Disney World parks easy for you. But especially wonderful for your Animal Kingdom trip. The first tip, like I love to say, is to slowly get into solo travel. If you have never been anywhere by yourself, you've never went to the movies, you never went to dinner, lunch, anything, just ease your way into it. Some of the things that I recommend doing is if you are meeting friends at the Disney parks for some type of adventure, or if you're going to Orlando for a convention, then maybe get there a day ahead of your family, your friends, and just try to do like a half day at the park or just an hour before anybody meets you there. That is a good way to kind of ease yourself into solo traveling to the theme parks 
if you are not even there, then maybe you can consider trying to do something like dinner by yourself. Maybe you don't want to have an actual table at a restaurant by yourself, but if you are an adult, consider sitting at the bar area. You don't have to order drinks. You can just sit there, get you some water and order a dinner, order an appetizer. Give yourself a time limit and say, I'm going to be here for an hour just to see that you can do solo traveling by yourself and you'll live. The next tip that I have for you is to plan out your day for Animal Kingdom. The thought of going to Animal Kingdom by yourself is probably stressful as it is. So to kind of ease some of the stress, I highly recommend having some type of game plan. It doesn't have to be anything airtight, but knowing exactly what you want to do will kind of keep your mind on trying to get to those rides. Then you'll forget that you're traveling by yourself because you're trying to make sure that you get on flight of passage before the line gets crazy and see a safari on the Kilimanjaro safari ride and attraction. You'll also want to review the Animal Kingdom map before you get there, which you can look at it over on ThinkParkHipster.com on the Animal Kingdom solo article, or you could just go to your My Disney Experience app and look at the map from your phone. The next tip is to book your top Animal Kingdom fast passes and reservations ASAP. Fast passes to some of the hottest attractions such as Flight of Passage needs to be booked like today or yesterday or whenever because that fast pass is really hard to get at Animal Kingdom and that is something you definitely have to do on your solo trip. I mean, Flight of Passage is so magical and I don't want to ruin it for you if you've never been on it, but it's just one of those experiences that when I go on it by myself and I'm kind of in my adult mood, I kind of already stopped at the Nomad Lounge and got a little beverage. And then I get on that ride right afterward. It just like makes me feel so special. I really feel like I don't know what heaven looks like. So I don't want to say that. But I will say that the visuals in Flight of Passage, they really do something with my spirit. It really just cheers me up. And, you know, I sometimes get a little teary-eyed. When I'm by myself, I feel like such a dork for getting teary-eyed. I'm like, man, I hope this person next to me doesn't see it. And I try to like, act like I'm scratching my eye when I'm really trying to wipe a tear away. <laughs> also, in addition to booking your fast passes, you're going to want to make reservations to other things, such as any kind of dining experience that you want to do in advance. Tusker House is a popular restaurant at Animal Kingdom, but maybe try one of their special events. They have nighttime safari events where you can get dinner, you get to meet characters, and you get a walking tour throughout the safari. I mean, Disney knows how to do it. And when you're an adult traveling solo, those special events can really help your trip, especially if you've been to Animal Kingdom many times with people. This time, when you're doing it by yourself, try one of them special events. You're going to meet people, maybe even other solo travelers who are a part of the same events and tours like you are. The next tip that I have for you is to make sure you discover all the nooks and crannies, discover all the lands at Animal Kingdom. You're going to want to learn a different history of all the areas at Animal Kingdom. There's so many unique hidden gems and facts that you'll love learning about as you walk through each area. Animal Kingdom is divided into seven different sections. That's Oasis, Discovery Island, Pandora, World of Avatar, Africa, Rafiki's Planet Watch, Asia, and Dino Land, USA. And Pandora, the World of Avatar, is a gem in its own right because this land truly immerses you and takes you into such a magical journey that you don't even feel like you're in a theme park anymore. I mean... They did their thing on Pandora World of Avatar. And you will automatically be so happy to see how Disney can incorporate their signature storytelling from the gates or the transition walkway of Pandora at Animal Kingdom. The next tip I have for you is to experience your Animal Kingdom must-do attractions. Since it's your solo Disney trip, it's a time to do Animal Kingdom your way. This is the number one perk I always hear from solo travelers of doing any of the theme parks is that you get to plan out your own day. Can you imagine that? I want you to stop. Sit back and imagine walking into Animal Kingdom. Clean slate, unless you plan be before, but even that is a clean slate for you to decide what you want to do. You don't have anyone saying, oh, wait, before we start, I got to go to the bathroom. You don't have anyone saying, oh, my God, I'm hungry. Why are you going to another ride? You do what you want. 
And I don't think you really understand that kind of power and freedom that that is when you are traveling by yourself. Try it and come back and tell us. Tell us over in the Theme Park Hipster app. Tell us in the Theme Park Hipster Facebook group. Just let us know what was your feeling when you walked through those gates and you were like, you know what? I could do this. I can stop and look at these birds in this walkway for five minutes or five hours. I can go over to Kilimanjaro Safari, ride it 10 times, and no one's going to say a thing. This is your trip. Now, some of my must-do Animal Kingdom attractions and dining experiences are, I really like going over to Rafiki's Planet Watch. It's a conservation station that you have to take a train from Africa over there, and they have like a petting zoo out there. But on top of that, they have a lot of interactive things that you can do that you're learning about animals and how the cast members are helping with the conservation project. I love Rafiki's Planet Watch. Also, Expedition Everest, the famous roller coaster at Animal Kingdom. You have to do that. Festival of the Lion King. Oh my God. If you don't do that on your trip, something's wrong. You got to do that. You got to do a safari. And you definitely have to do both rides in Pandora, the world of Avatar. As far as dining, I really don't do too many sit-down restaurants at Animal Kingdom, but I will sit my behind down at the Nomad Lounge because if you do not know about the Nomad Lounge, it is on the side of Tiffin's Restaurant right before you get to Pandora. And they have outside seating and indoor seating, and the atmosphere is just so relaxing. It's like you have went through the Imagineers' travel conquests around the world, and now you guys are meeting back up for some drinks and appetizers. It is amazing. The next tip I have for you is to not be afraid to socialize. I always say that I know what it's like to be an introvert and I still struggle with it to this day. But the thing about me and that I want you to be able to do is to push past your fears of sparking conversations. You don't have to be anyone's best friend, but you can just say, oh, wow, I really like this on you. Oh, wow. How did you get that outfit? Where did you get that shirt from? Anything, even cast members. If you don't want to talk to strangers, talk to a cast member. Ask them, wow, how long have you been here? I love what you're doing here. Thank you. Anything, but just spark up conversations. You never know where that might go. And if you want to meet other solo travelers, like I said, join us over on the Theme Park Hipster app where you can communicate back and forth with other solo theme park travelers. It is the perfect way to get excited about being in this whole theme park universe with other travelers. The next tip I have for you is to take lots of photos. This is your trip. And like the previous guest I had, Shringrilla, if you go to her Instagram account, you will see that she is into taking the best Disney trips. And she had her first solo trip. So she was taking so many photos. I will definitely leave a link to her profile account so that you can check out what a solo traveler trip can be like when you're taking up all those dope photos. The next tip I have is to know why you are going solo. Know the benefits. And like I said earlier, freedom, being able to decide what you want to do when you want to do it. The next perk that I really like about traveling solo is that I get to meet other solo theme park travelers and you'll get to do that too. Plus overall, just traveling solo, it just really rounds you out as a person. When you have to be able to be okay with being alone, but you're not lonely. Remember that you're not lonely. You might be alone, but you're not lonely. It really does help you kind of like understand, I got this. I got this life thing. I got this adult thing. I think I got a handle on it. And it's just freeing. It's freeing. It's rejuvenating. And what I call theme park therapy. The last tip I want you to know is that when you are at Animal Kingdom, you are definitely not alone. You are home. You're home. So why don't you get comfortable, put your feet up, enjoy some food, some drinks, enjoy some friends, enjoy some music, entertainment, and some of that classic Disney charm. Because while you are in Animal Kingdom, it is time for you to immerse yourself in what truly Disney magic is supposed to feel like on your solo trip. Okay, guys, you have now been empowered with nine spectacular trips to empower you on your next solo theme park trip to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Before we leave, I'm going to review them quickly so that they can stick in your head. First tip is to ease your way into solo travel. The second tip is to map out your day at Animal Kingdom. 
The third tip is to book your fast passes and reservations right away. The fourth tip is to discover all of the lands at Animal Kingdom. The fifth tip is to make sure you do all of your must-do attractions. The sixth tip is to don't be afraid to socialize, guys. Remember that. The seventh tip is to take lots of photos. The eighth tip is to know the benefits of traveling alone. And the ninth tip is to remember that you are never truly alone. There you have it, guys. Those are the tips for conquering Animal Kingdom. Remember, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach me at themeparkhipster at gmail.com. And if you'd like to connect with other solo theme park travelers, don't forget to download the Theme Park Hipster app over on the Apple App Store. Please remember to review and rate the show. That way, others can find it and I can continue to bring you theme park hacks tailored just for you. And remember that you are my friend and you are my family, this theme park family. And until next time, Happy Park Hopping Hipsters. The content on the Theme Park Hipster Show represents my own and not those of any organizations or activity mentioned. I am just someone here who likes to share my own stories to you and hope that I can help you have the best vacation ever. <laughs>